Let's go back to the injury and what happened, Strand, and how Dodd got involved in your life. Well, uh, you know, I think a common theme for the show tonight is brokenness, mm. you know, and, and uh, uh, really that's uh, what really brought us together. I have to go back to a, uh, a time in my life where God was dealing with me. I, it was Matthew 6.33, seek ye first, my first response. And at a, at a time in my life to where uh, I had an injury, it was the end of the season, it was a uh, pretty much career somewhat end ending injury. And uh, really the way I handled it was, that's what God was dealing with me at the time was Matthew 6.33. That's the, that was the word. And I, and I was able to handle that with it not being that big of a deal because of a previous injury mm -hmm. <laughs> that I had suffered. I had a stroke when I was 32 years old and had brought, had, had brought me, actually had my career taken away, brought back. This was 06. I had my right arm pretty much tore off my body. It's the last rodeo of the year. Okay, now, Strand, let's stop right there because somebody doesn't understand the cowboy culture. Yeah. And they're thinking you just go out on the range and kind of ride a horse. And, but tell us about this rodeo cowboy. What do you do in the rodeo? I'm a calf roper. Okay. And so, uh, you know, my job is to beat everybody its own time. So, uh, and it's down to the tenths of a second. The fast time is uh, somewhere in the six and seven second range. So, uh, you know, you have no time for error, no time for injuries for sure. And, it, and rodeo has transformed into a professional sport. It's, right. not, it's not the good old boy standing around anymore and, and, and shooting the bull and, and seeing who can ride the bull. Right. You know, this, <laughs> is, this is professional stuff. And so, it's a uh, sport. It's a sport. And it's, uh, you know, we, we, I, that's the way I make my living. That's the way I provide for my family. Right. So th this, this injury was a very devastating injury at the time. And what, what I did was, and I knew it, but because of my previous knowledge and what God had brought me through and where he was taking me, I was able to ride out of the back of the arena and I couldn't lift my right arm. Mm -hmm. And I raised my left hand up and I said, Lord, I know this is serious, but I'm excited to see what's going to happen, what's going to transform right. out of us, transpire. So, sure enough, I, I, I go to the doctor. It's major sh shoulder surgery, about five hours worth of surgery. They tie everything back together. My career's in jeopardy whether I'll come back or not. My wife is a TV announcer for rodeo. Right. So I go with her to the national finals, which I had been to, which is our World Series, eight different times. And I go out there as a spectator with my arm in a sling. And who's out there but... Paula White. And so you're doing a show out there. You know, what had happened, Strand, is I had preached in uh, San Antonio and Bishop Hawkins. I knew nothing about cowboy culture. And I said, you know, and I, and I was seeing so many men and women of faith and had great faith. And I was so drawn by the love of God and what God was doing yeah. within a certain community, just like you'd say what God was doing in the NFL or what God was doing in this place. And I was so drawn. And he said, I, I can get you interviews with all the champions. I said, you're kidding me. So next thing I knew, I'm down in the ring <laughs> with the bulls and the horses, Don. <laughs> and I'm talking to all the champions. And that's where I meet Strand and Jennifer. And you start telling me about your injury. And we go out to dinner. Right. And so we do this. And, and when you start telling pick up there because you start telling me about your injury. And I'm like, I've got a God connection for you. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that, that was, it was, that, that's the only way to really to explain how a trainer like Dodd and a professional cowboy get together. Because, because in the it natural, a, it no. was over. You were yeah. done. I mean, you wouldn't really be able to come back. I mean, like they said. Exactly. Or not, you know, if you did, it was, it was done. I said, no. I said, there's a guy that God has. I said, now, he only takes divine assignments. Right. <laughs> and I said, he'll only, I said, I, he's a dear friend, and he's in my life for this season. I said, but I'm going to get you hooked up. And then what happens, Dodd? He flew me out to San Antonio, and I had to see if it was a God connection. Right. And sure enough, uh, after three minutes talking to my brother here, I, I said, this is an appointment. This is, this is where I'm supposed to be. Now, I don't want to interrupt, but tell why you do that. Why do you say, is this a God appointment? Because so sometimes um, you can do as much harm 
than, than good. If someone's a little bit cocky and arrogant with their gift and they're not giving it up to God and giving glory back to God, you can almost cause a monster. Right. And, and um, I have to make sure, since God gave me this great ability, that they're going to give it to give glory back to God. Because you didn't always do that, but you made a deal. I made a deal. When, Tell about the deal. <laughs> it's a, a long story, but I, I made a deal. I almost lost my baby girl, uh, Gianna, uh, to a liver transplant. And, and um, we s received a liver transplant. And I was basically in a church for three days uh, begging the Lord for forgiveness. Because you were serving the world. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Begged him for forgiveness and uh, got on my hands and knees for three days, literally straight in the church, uh, uh, making this promise to God. If he, if he gave me my baby girl back and gave, gave her a second chance and gave me a second chance, that I would, I would spend the rest of my life g doing my gift and helping other people glorify God. So, so everything from that point became about purpose. It purpose. became, is it a God assignment? And people would offer you major money, and you'd say, no, is it a God assignment? So I bring you to meet this cowboy. <laughs> what, how do you know it's a God assignment? <laughs> Just uh, by, he, he was uh, so humble so kind, so loving, but so strong and rugged at the same time. I, I knew that this, this, this is uh, a man that lives for the Lord. He has that perfect combination of, of strength, courage, but still gentle and kind and, and carried a, a, a meekness about him, how I've tried to, tried to carry myself. And I, I realized at that point uh, it's on. Uh, we, we, we can climb any mountain. We can heal any shoulder. The Lord's uh, got our back. He's our head coach. We just have to listen to him, and, and uh, he will guide us where we need to go. And long story short, he became not only better, he became champion of the world. Woo! what it was all about. So tell me the condition when you met Strand. Tell, take us to the physical there. What, what was the physical condition? How impossible was it? And then what began to happen? Well, he was at a spot in his, in his career where uh, he hadn't really applied uh, a lot of um, discipline with his nutrition and his flexibility and his he wasn't doing the athletic part about it so much. He was just doing the cowboy part. And, and the Lord's given me that wisdom where I can um, bring in the athletic part right. with the spiritual. And we basically, I taught him a, a whole new lifestyle. Not a diet, not a nutritional program, not a regiment. Just trying to live how the Lord lo wants us to live in every way. Right. And we applied those principles and worked incredibly hard. And uh, I believe you reap what you sow. Right. And we sowed a lot of seed, and we've, we've, we've uh, uh, been blessed with, with uh, the result of uh, all the hard work. And it, it, in the natural, and that's where I, I, I know God likes to show off and, and let it be known that that you can't do it without him. Mm -hmm. You can't. You know, and I, I think an important thing here about our relationship is, you know, brothers are built for adversity. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably more, uh, with, uh, just as much as the physical, it's we, we help sharpen one another's sword. Mm -hmm. I mean, we bounce things off of each other. We, we, he, he refers to us all the time as, 
as brothers, right. just in different bodies. Right. <laughs> Quite a bit different bodies. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's, that's we, uh, you know, it's that balance, having that balance of the spiritual man, the physical man, and being able to, um, you know, in your mental part of the whole deal and the way God works through all those things. You know, that's, that's, that's the, you know, it, it, that's what God works in all things, right? What's all things mean? All things means all, all things. things, right? Okay. Right. So, Strand, tell us the results. What happened? Because here's this God connection. It's more, Dodd, you said it, and I want to drill it in. It's more than just, okay, I went on a diet, I got healthy, and I worked out. That's not what it is. It's lifestyle. Because ultimately, I think, Strand, like many of us come to the realization, this is the temple of God. And as the temple of God, uh, when we get educated in knowledge, we perish without knowledge. But with knowledge, we have a responsibility. And with knowledge, I did my life expectancy the other day, Dodge, you'll be glad. 95 years old. Well, I'm going to live to be 95. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be preaching. I, I'm going to go ahead and claim 120, though. Yeah, but but medical say community like says 95. And I'm going to be preaching like a wild woman when I'm 92, saying, that's come right. on and bring them. Because there's a responsibility in the earth. And that's really the transformation. The greater transformation was with the knowledge that God has gifted God, he gave to you, and you, you realize my my vessel my, is the temple of God. And the combination of spirit, soul, and body becoming one just did what God wants to do for all of us. Sure. It manifested the result that it was easy. You walked out the manifestation, which is your champion, because every one of us was created to win. Every one of us was designed to enjoy life. We're not supposed to wake up with headaches. We're not supposed to feel bad. We're not supposed to be dying with diseases every day. We're not supposed to be buried up. You're not supposed to be really strong spiritually, but can't half want to get out of bed or every part of you aching. That's not the design of God. And when God brought Dodd into my life, I'd suffered that lung disease that so many people know. And I, I'm just going and blowing and on the road all the time. And, and it really brought him into my life to teach me to the whole new level that I didn't know how to feel good all the time and not do what I'm doing on the lower portion of the, the energy scale, but live out of the high place that God is putting high octane in your, in your body and living in the high place of God. And was that the summation of what happened? And your purpose is cowboy. That's your purpose is God gave you a gift to rope some calves, yeah. you know, yeah. but to bring him glory. Exactly. And you know, here's the deal that we've, that Dodd and I have really, this is, this is pretty much our stance on it, is, it, is, is you, know, you know, you don't have to be a world champion. You don't have to be a world renowned trainer. You don't have to be uh, out in the public eye to make an impact for him. And to, to really, you know, never give up on your dreams. Never Ooh. give up on your dreams. If your heart, if your heart's still beating in your chest right now, that's proof positive that God's not through with you yet. You have an assignment. You have an assignment. You know, it says, it says in Deuteronomy 30, 19, it says, This day I set before you life and death. Choose life. Choose me. Choose me today. You have a purpose. Go fulfill it. That's the key to it. Dot, what do you have to say in the last 30 seconds? In the last 30 seconds, what I have to say is um, we thought that it was about Strand and I. Yeah. Right. And through all this, he had a nephew, has a nephew, Sawyer, that has now become my little brother, that has now been living with me for uh, four months and no escaping. He's, he's in, been in a boot camp. And he found the Lord, and he's given glory to God. So. He's playing college football now, right? Yes. He's yes. getting trained. And, but see, that's the plan of God. So God makes a divine assignment, does a work in your life to be multiplied in the lives of others, that they're getting saved, their families are being restored, because the work of God, people get attracted initially because they see a champion. They see the physical, but then they hear the story, and the story is to God be all the glory. And Dodge, you bring in an aspect that the body of Christ needs, that we are the temple of God, and that God wants us to be at our best. 
Kim said, we've got to pray. We've got to pray. Daryl showed us we've got to be restored. We've got to be restored. And Don and Strand are saying, we've got to be well. We've got to be physically whole. God's saying, I want to synergistically put you back together so there's nothing missing and nothing broken. But you're going to be spiritually well. You're going to be emotionally well. And you're going to be physically well. 